Hi, I'm Chris Coombs and this is The Truth in Diabetes. So this weekend I got an email from a cousin of mine, Samantha. Samantha mentioned to me that she's got a good friend, 12 year old boy with type 1 juvenile onset diabetes. Well, um, if you've watched many of the videos that I've done, you know I am a type 1 juvenile onset diabetic, uh, diabetic been treating this disease for 20 years now. Now I found out um, diabetes started me when I was about 14 years old, not uh, much older than uh, my cousin's friend's son, Caden. This video is for you. Um, started about the time I was 14 and then they diagnosed it just a week before I was 16. Um, one question I used to ask myself a lot is why me? Why do I have this disease? Why do I have to be diabetic? Why can't I eat sugar anymore? Why do I have to take these stupid shots? All these questions I asked. Well. I know why me now. Let me tell you a little bit about my sole purpose and what I believe to be the reason why God put me here with diabetes is so that I can serve other people who are faced with this challenge. I'm here to do whatever I can to assist you in taking care of yourself, whether that's education, mentoring, teaching, coaching, being a friend, being a support, whatever that looks like, that's exactly what I'm here to do. And so I was quite thrilled when I got this email, and so I'm happy to talk with you a little bit more about what's going on here. Um, as I understand it, Caden uh, had his first episode of diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA. Honestly, um, I've had two instances of DKA in the time that I've been diabetic, and that is quite frankly the worst thing I have ever felt in that time. I couldn't keep down food, couldn't keep down water, I was throwing up violently, and at that point is when I had to go to the emergency room to get help because I could not take care of myself at that point. I needed intervention at that point. So what happens in your body when you've got DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis? If you don't have insulin present to take the glucose molecule into your cell so that you've got energy to burn, metabolism going on, your body's not just going to stop. It's going to look for another energy source. So what it does is it produces an acid to start to break down the fat. So that's what DKA is. You've got elevated blood glucose levels, you've got this elevated level of acid, and you've got all this sugar running through your body. Well, when that's going on, the only way that your body can get rid of that sugar is to dump it through your kidneys. So you're going to start to pee a lot. And at that point, that's when you become dehydrated. So that's what's going on. That's the basics, the 411 of what's going on with DKA. Now, what are the most common causes of that? Number one is skipping doses of insulin. I've done that. Um, I'll get doing something, I'll eat a meal, I'll go about my day and I'll forget to take that time you know, I'm, we're talking about two minutes to check a blood sugar and take an injection of insulin. Okay, that happens. The other cause of DKA can quite frequently be illness. Now that was another episode that I had. I believe it was flu that triggered the DKA in my body. That's why you'll hear your doctor talk about sick days and if you've got a sick day going on, you want to be checking your blood sugar a lot more frequently than you normally would to watch out for something like this, the symptoms of DKA cutting on, coming on. So let me talk about that. What are some symptoms? What, what are some things going on that might say, hey, I better get on the phone with the doctor and if that's not possible, it might be time for a trip uh, to uh, urgent care or even the emergency room. You know, if you have, if you've thrown up more than twice, stomach pain, diarrhea, um, two blood glucose levels higher than 300. Um, the other thing, if you've got a blood glucose less than 70, uh, more than once, or symptoms of low blood sugar, okay, so if you're on the other side of that scale as well. Trouble breathing, moderate or large ketones, if you're using urine test strips, um, those are some, some symptoms to watch out for. Insulin pumps, if you're on an insulin pump and you're using that short-acting insulin, sometimes your pump isn't working right. You may have a blockage, something along those lines. So those are some symptoms to watch for. for. But you know, how can you prevent DKA? Make sure you're working you know, with your doctor to have a plan if your blood uh, sugar gets too high. I'm sure that they're gonna, you know, set up some kind of a plan with you so that you have a correction dose. If your blood sugar is over a certain level, they're going to tell you how much to take. 
And then if you've got ketones in your urine, it usually takes more insulin. So you can talk with a doctor about that. I mean, I unfortunately, I'm not a doctor. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, I don't need a degree to tell you these are the experiences and these are the thumbs of the things that I've been through. So those are the basics of diabetic ketoacidosis. But the biggest thing I want to stress to you, Caden, is you didn't do anything wrong. Just realize that this is a learning experience. It's something that happened with your body. Now you can learn from this and, you know, Take a look at what happened, what the circumstances were, maybe what you could have done differently or just things to keep in mind. So I also understand that you've been to diabetic camp. That was probably the greatest thing that I could have done when um, I was a young man was getting involved with diabetic camp and building friendships, getting close to other people who were dealing with diabetes and learning about what worked for them. Dave Okubo and his team, what an amazing group of people. Um, absolutely love those guys. But the other things that you can do, and again, this is why I created the Truth in Diabetes, was for people like Sam that were willing to send me an email and say, hey, this is something I'm experiencing. What do you know? I may have the answer. I may not. But if I don't, I can look for it. But I was also hoping that what we could do here is create a system and a community of support, something that's personalized, a place where we can interact, we can help each other out with things that are going on. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in this topic on my blog. If you type in truth and diabetes, that will, uh, dot com, truthanddiabetes.com, that will link you into my blog. Also, if you go to Facebook, you can find me on uh, The Truth and Diabetes. So, um, again, it's Chris Coombs here with The Truth and Diabetes. I am here to support you. If there's anything I can do, send me a Facebook message. That's probably the best way to find me. But again, I'm here to support you in taking on your diabetes. Disease or destiny, it's your choice.